close. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I need to get this on the church page, so bear with me for about a minute while I copy and paste and get it on the church page. And then I'll share with you some great things that you're gonna love to hear in the name of Jesus. Nope, there's the church page right there. Okay, so go on there and click and paste. There we go. And make sure it's there playing and I go next and post. And then as soon as it posts, I can come back. All right, now I can come back to my page and it says one person's already on, that's good. But it says I have 23 partners or uh, people, uh, I guess they're probably friends that are on right now. So maybe all my friends out there will get the message. Okay, oh, that's a lot of work in just a minute. All right, praise the Lord. Good to have you with us. I'm Pastor Bill Emmons. This is Thursday's Word. And I believe I got a word from the Lord. I woke up with it this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think it has anything to do with um, where we just came from. We literally just came, walked in the door mm -hmm. and set things up and go on the air. Um, we were had the privilege of being at uh, Kathy Mink's, uh, you know, Lynn and Kathy Mink. Uh, so we had the privilege of being at her uh, celebration of life over at Rama, And, uh, well, boy, I'll tell you, there were, there were a lot of people there. I, I, I don't know, it's the last time I saw a service like that with that many people there, but they were well-recognized, well-loved, and um, uh, Kathy went home to be with the Lord on the Sunday of the 8th, I think it was, of May. Was it was 7th or 8th? 7th. 7th of May? <laughs> and they've got that on here, but I, for some reason I thought it was the 8th. <laughs> Anyway, she uh, stepped over and uh, into heaven, and um, she's there now rejoicing. And uh, uh, the pastor, I guess his pastor, uh, is um, Mary? Ken Stewart. Ken Stewart, yeah, Ken Stewart, uh, who has Sunday sessions uh, here in Tulsa at 3 o'clock Sunday afternoons. Uh, that's where Brian Sinks, those of you in California who know Brian Sinks, that's where he attends. Uh, anyway, uh, he shared an interesting uh, story. He said when Lynn Mink called him to tell him that uh, Kathy had passed over, uh, he immediately got a picture of Kathy standing there with Jesus and laughing. And, and then she turns around and uh, points at Lynn in the earth. <laughs> and said, nah, 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 and I can sing better than you now, and uh, something of that nature. I may be slightly misquoting it, but that's basically, he was always kidding her about how she didn't couldn't sing. And so she said, now I can sing better than you. So that was interesting. Brother Kip Copeland gave a, a great uh, message, exhortation, mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the singer that we like to listen to every morning um, Nelson? No, no, that we listen to every morning. Oh, David Ingalls. David Ingalls was there. Gray Jean Wilson was there. Uh, Ken Hagen and Lynette were there. Craig Hagen was there, of course. Um, and so many other people, some we knew, some we didn't know. <clears throat> but it was just a, a beautiful service. It was a little over two hours long, but uh, really a blessing uh, to be there. So we came right from there to here turn on the cameras, and we're ready to go. <laughs> so praise God. Uh, just want to see if, any, if if you're watching on Facebook, do me a favor and um, just uh, make a comment. Just say, hi, Pastor Bill, or uh, anything that's good, nothing bad. Uh, on Instagram, you can do the same thing. You can make a comment. Uh, if, you're, if you're blessed by this message, Tell us you're blessed. We want to know if people are, I got a great um, uh, word of blessing. Somebody that uh, on our last uh, service, which was Sunday, no, Tuesday night, uh, somebody got really blessed and sent me a message on Instagram. So thank you for that. But uh, we want to hear from you. You know, it's, uh, 
it encourages us to, to know that our efforts are not, you know, uh, well, I know they're not in vain, That's right. but it's good to get some uh, response back. So, plus, the more you click like and share and follow mm -hmm. and get notification and comment, all those things that you do, uh, what happens is the algorithms picks all that, that activity up and then pushes mm -hmm. our program out to other people. In other words, we get a wider viewership of people that we can reach with this message. So um, please be, uh, please do that for us. Click all those buttons and make sure you uh, give us a comment and tell us, uh, you know, that you're blessed. Uh, even if it's not something we said, just say I'm blessed, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the, I woke up with this this morning and... Um, the, the title we have, I, I, I had three different titles going around in my head, but uh, the one that I settled on was Take Comfort, and then you'll understand why. So I'm going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, so just five verses, but I want to read it to you from two different translations. So this will be the Amplified translation first. It, it, well, let me before I do that. Let me let me preface this by saying that last night when I was when I was laying in bed before I went to sleep, I, I pray every night. I pray when I go to bed. I pray when I get up. Then you know throughout the day, depending on what's going on. Um, but last night I was thinking about how many people we know of that have passed away uh, in the last uh, year to two years. And, uh, you know, my, I, my younger brother, uh, you know, he passed on uh, um, a month or so ago, a little over a month ago. And that was a shock. And um, it, um, you know, obviously being a brother, I mean, we weren't all that close because he was 14 years younger than me. But as uh, he got older, you know, we tried to have interaction and fellowship over the years with him and his family. Uh, but you know, that, that really hit me. And then, uh, there was, uh, um, oh, uh, Louvier, Jane, Wendy Louvier and Wendy went home to be with the Lord unexpectedly. Uh, that, you know, affected us cause we were, we, they start out in our ministry, you know, and then, uh, here uh, just, uh, two weeks ago with, uh, Kathy Mink. And it got me to thinking how many people have passed over uh, recently, uh, it, Mary, here's the phone, in our lives that um, have had some kind of an impact on us that, um, you know, we, maybe we didn't realize how much they impacted our lives. Uh, and it could be somebody close to you, like with Lynn Mink and with Jay Louvier, their wives. Uh, that's, that's a real hard thing to, you know, to accept and to, uh, you know, deal with, uh, losing a child the same way. That's very hard to deal with. So really this exhortation is to encourage any of you, all of you that hear this, uh, about the situation and all of you that maybe you haven't lost anybody. When I say lost, you, you know what I'm talking about. They passed away. You haven't lost them. If they're born again, we know exactly where they're at. Um, but somebody that, you know, close enough to you that it has an impact on your life has gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, and we know they're in heaven. We know they're with the Lord. We know they're having a celebration. We know they're greeting family and friends that have gone on before and, and they're not in any pain. Uh, they're not experiencing any problems. They're not even thinking about the earth. They're not thinking about what, oh, gee, I might miss this and I might miss that, you know. They're up there celebrating, having a good time. They are free from the limitations uh, of this world. So we should not grieve. We should actually rejoice. The only reason we grieve is we feel the loss. But we haven't lost them. They're there waiting for us now. And so I want to share this with you. Uh, uh, again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 now also, we would not have you ignorant, brethren, about those who fall asleep in death, that you, so that you may not grieve. And, and I want to I want to bring that word out here as an emphasis. We God doesn't want us to grieve. 
If they're born again, God wants us to rejoice. And I know that's hard because your emotions, your flesh get involved and your memories and all the things that, you know, you, you, the interaction or relationship you've had with that person. But we're not supposed to grieve. We're supposed to rejoice. And when you don't know the truth about where they went and, and you're not, you know, how can I say, you don't have that revelation. Uh, it's easy to get caught up in the emotions and start grieving, mm -hmm. but that's all it is. It's emotion. It is not of God. It is people say, well, you got to grieve. No, the Bible says mm -hmm. not to. So, you know, get the grieving out of the way and start rejoicing by faith. If you have to, not that they left you because they didn't choose to leave you. It's, you know, whatever the situation was, and I would have to say probably 99.9% .9 of the time, it was not their choice to die, okay? And uh, yet they went, and we, and I know people whose uh, spouses, for example, that, you know, get mad at their spouse that passed on because, you know, why did you leave me? And why did you, you know, did, didn't you care about me? You know, and it's about, it's about me, my emotions. No, forget about that. Let's rejoice that they're with the Lord, with the confidence we're going to see them again. Mm -hmm. And it may not be all that too, too long. All right. So, so that you may not grieve for them as the rest do who have no hope. In other words, people that are born again have hope. If you're born again, you've got hope not only for you, but you've got hope for that loved one. Mm -hmm. Hope being a confident and favorable expectation of good things to come. That's what hope really, that's the definition of hope. I have a confidence. I have an expectation. We have a daughter that, that went to be with the Lord at 18 months old, our, our uh, second child. And, uh, you know, that, that hit us hard. But we had to stop the grieving part mm -hmm. and start, you know, thinking about the fact, well, wait a minute, she's with the Lord. We're going to see her again. Now, I've heard some people say, well, when you get to heaven, uh, if you lost a, a child, you're going to be able to raise that child. I've heard others say that when they got to heaven, they somebody approached them, this beautiful woman uh, came up to the, uh, this uh, husband or wife that lost a child, and they didn't even recognize until she said, I'm your, I'm your uh, daughter, you know, I'm, I'm the one you lost uh, back, you know, in those days. So I don't know which is going to be, and it really doesn't matter. The fact is, they're there waiting for you. Now, don't think you got to go early. <laughs> it's way to live out your full life and do the will of God. So the people that are grieving are the people that have no hope beyond the grave. That's what he's talking about. We have hope beyond the grave. Even if you lay down your body in death, you, you know, when, you, when, I, when I left my body, and I went to heaven back on August 8th, 2021. I had no sense of dying. I had no sense of being in my body or out of my body, except the fact that I could fly. <laughs> and I was, I was floating along way, way above the birds. The birds were below me. And I was, I was seeing a, a vast landscape of mountains, meadows, streams, waterfalls, lakes, mm. Uh, just in the most gorgeous vegetation I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I had no sense that I had died. There was no pain. There was nothing. I just slipped out of my body and went there. But Mary and my son, uh, uh, John, they, they would not let go of me. And God brought me back. Uh, of course, the paramedics has something to do with my body reviving as well. But I really believe, and the Lord spoke to Mary after the, after it all happened, and he says, I gave you back your husband. Well, I still, I have no fear of death after having experienced that. Are you kidding me? I'm not the least bit concerned mm -hmm. because when that time comes and I slip out of my body, I'm not feeling any pain. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be, you know, with my family that's already there. Mm -hmm. My mother's there. My grandmother's there. My dad's there. Mm -hmm. My grandparents on my dad's side are there. I don't know beyond that, but I know them. And I've got aunts and uncles and at least one brother and one child. So we're going to have a grand celebration. They're going to have to have a, uh, a, a banquet hall just for our family to get together. Mm -hmm. 
So anyway, verse 14, for since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will all, now listen, God will also bring with him through Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in death. Verse 15, for this we declare to you by the Lord's own words, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall in no way precede into his presence or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in him in death. <clears throat> For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Now there's three things that's going to happen. There's going to be a loud cry of summons. Jesus is going to say like he did to John uh, in the book of Revelation, come up here. And I believe Jesus is going to tell her that, come on up. You know, but there's that game show on TV. I think it's the price is right. And they say, come on down. Mm -hmm. Jesus is going to say, come on up. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start going up. But it says the Lord will descend from heaven with a loud cry of summons. He's calling us up and the shout of an archangel. That's the second thing. And with the blast of a trumpet of God, that's an announcing, you know, the blast of the trumpet is announcing somebody's arrival. Mm -hmm. And already the, the, the angels of God are going to sound a trumpet and announce our arrival into heaven. Oh, hallelujah. That's going to be something else. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, those who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. In other words, they're going to come up out of the graves. And then we, the living ones that remain on the earth, shall, listen, simultaneously mm -hmm. be caught up along with the resurrected dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So the moment they hit ground level, you know, from six feet down, when they hit ground level, we all start going up together. And we're going to be looking around. We're going to be pointing and waving at people we know that, that have gone on before us. It's going to be something else. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's um, I, I keep thinking when I'm getting up there and, I'm the, and the higher I go, the smaller earth gets, uh, it's going to, I, I'm the kind of person that likes to observe and, and pay attention to things like that. And I'm going to be sitting and looking around and watching myself get further and further away from this world as we go up wherever you think heaven is. Uh, we were talking about that today. Is it simultaneously with us? Is it up away from us? Is it out in another planet? Wherever it is, we're going. And it's going to be like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we, the living ones who remain on the earth, shall simultaneously be caught up along with the resurrected dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so always through the eternity of eternities shall we be with the Lord. In other words, we'll be in heaven where the Lord will reside. Therefore, comfort and encourage one another with these words. So he gave us these verses here, these five verses, one, two, three, four, five, actually six verses. He gave us these verses to encourage us, uh, to get us to the point we're not grieving, but we're rejoicing because they're, the people that go on before us, they're just one step ahead of us mm -hmm. because there's no time and there's no distance in the spirit realm. So they're just one step ahead of us. When we show up, they're not going to say, what took you so long? They're going to say, oh, you're here already. <laughs> All right. Now I want to read this from the Passion Translation. Beloved brothers and sisters, we want you to be quite certain about the truth concerning those who have passed away so that you won't be overwhelmed with grief like many others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, we also believe that God will bring with Jesus those who died while believing in him. This is the word of the Lord. We who are alive in him and remain on the earth when the Lord appears will by no means have an advantage over those who have already died, for both will rise together. For the Lord himself will appear in the, uh, with, now listen, with the declaration of victory the shout of an archangel, and the trumpet blast of God, he will descend from the heavenly realm and command those who are dead in Christ to rise first. Then we who are alive will join him, transported together in clouds 
to have an encounter with the Lord in the air. And we will forever be joined with the Lord. So encourage one another with these words. So the biggest takeaway from this is, well, at least at this point, is don't allow grief to control your life. Not even for a minute. That's, that's just what the devil wants to do is get control of your emotions. And through that, he can get control of your thinking. He can get control of your flesh. I mean, there's people that went out and killed themselves because they lost a spouse and they want to join them right away. Well, that's, that's stupid. We got a job to do. Let's do our job as long as we can. Amen. But we should not be grieving because we have hope. We have confidence. We have an expectation. Uh, we have confident expectation of what? Good things. What, what do you mean? Good, th good things to come. We haven't seen them yet, but we're going to receive them. So he says, encourage one another with these words. Now, I want to take a look and see how long I've gone, 20 minutes, and, well, that's just about the right time. Mm -hmm. So I trust this has been a, a booster for you, a word of encouragement. Even if you haven't uh, had that experience recently where you've lost somebody to death. By the way, death cannot hold them because they're, they're with the Lord, and their body will be raised up when Jesus comes back for us in the rapture. So that either way, they're still alive, and they're with the Lord. But we need to grab a hold of that revelation. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't had that happen, then meditate on this so that it builds you up with a confidence and an expectation of what's to come. And at any moment that trumpet can sound, at any moment Jesus can mm -hmm. say, come on up. And that, and that trumpet would blast. And, you know, now I, I, there's three things, like I said, he's going to call us up. And there's going to be the shout of an archangel and there's going to be a trumpet blast announcing our arrival. And when all that happens, you know, that's why the Bible says, look up because <laughs> we're going up. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Well, I hope that encouraged. I believe it did. Give me a little word of encouragement. Oh, look, he is with us. Hallelujah. Good to have you with us. Thank you. For, uh, <laughs> thank you, Kia. My mind's in end result now. I mean, it's time to end. Anyway, thanks, Kia, for those comments. I appreciate it. And um, let's see. Amen. There's hope beyond the grave. That's right. I agree. So be blessed. We'll see you back here Sunday with our regular service at our regular time. We love you guys. Appreciate you and all of our partners. We're praying for you. So keep up the good work and keep standing with us in faith for the things God's called us to do. With that, I'm going to let you go. Have a blessed day.